Hey everyone, welcome back to 86TV. Recently, my old MacBook seems to have slowed down a lot. The specs are still pretty beefy even though it is an older MacBook. And hopefully fitting this new SSD will bring it back to life. So, let's get into it. Okay, starting up you'll need the SSD hard drive and an enclosure to store this hard drive while you transfer your data. Tool-wise, you'll need a Torx T6 as well as a Phillips screwdriver. Time to get the SSD into the USB enclosure. So, one, two, three. Okay, up next, we're opening up Disk Utility. Once in Disk Utility, click on Partition. Down in the bottom, you can separate your drive into partitions, but for this, we're just going to use one partition. Once you've selected one partition, we're going to rename the SSD hard drive. So give it whatever name you want. In this case, we're going to call it SSD. You're then going to click on Options. Make sure you have GUID partition table selected. You can then click Apply and wait for the hard drive to be formatted. Your hard drive will not be usable unless you do this format or partition. When the format is complete, an option to use as a time machine backup will appear. We are not going to use this at this point in time. Next up, we have to clone the hard drive and we're going to use Carbon Copy Cloner to do this. It is free to use for 30 days, thereafter you can purchase it if you want. I will leave links to this in the description. All you have to do is drag your existing hard drive and drop it onto source and the SSD onto destination and then click on clone. This should take about an hour and a half to do depending on the size of your drive. So we're going to speed this process up a little. Once the clone is complete, you can then shut down your laptop and take your Phillips screwdriver and remove the bottom screws. There are 10 screws in total. There will be 6 short screws and 4 long based screws. At this point, I had already swapped out the hard drive because I had previously shot a video out of focus. So I had to reopen the laptop and reshoot the video just for demonstration purposes. Once the screws are out, you can then pop off the back cover. As you can see, my laptop is pretty dirty inside. I did not have a can of compressed air on me, so I will leave cleaning up your MacBook for another video. Once you're inside the laptop, you are going to move the small plastic retaining strip. The screws are fixed to this retaining strip, so you're just going to loosen them and pull the strip out completely. You are then going to use the plastic tab to pull out the hard drive very gently as the SATA cable is attached to the hard drive below. You are then going to pull off the SATA cable very gently. The four bolts were taken out using the Torx screwdriver from the previous hard drive. You will insert them exactly the same way into your new hard drive as you can see here. Lastly, you will remove the plastic tab from the old hard drive into the new hard drive. This will make it easier for you to lift up your hard drive in the future. You then fit back your SATA cable. Don't worry as the SATA cable only goes one way and should be easy for you to fit in. You then gently press back your hard drive into the enclosure. Do not forget to put the retaining clip back in. This is essential to secure the hard drive into place. It's now time to close up the MacBook so you can pop on the back plate and re-tighten the screws. Make sure not to over tighten the screws as you will damage the heads. This will make it a serious problem if you are trying to reopen your MacBook in the future. Once the back plate is on we can now switch on the MacBook and do some comparisons. So let's get into it. Okay so I sped these parts up because nobody really wants to see a MacBook booting. How fun. But the new SSD drive booted up in 29 seconds, whereas previously it booted up in 1 minute and 17 seconds. A big difference. Next up, I did a standard application test and I decided to use Recordbox DJ as a booting comparison. With the SSD, it took 13 seconds and with the old hard drive, it took 24 seconds. For the final test, I used a read and write program to test the comparison speeds. And you can see the SSD is much quicker, especially on the read speed. 
The old hard drive took nearly 20 minutes to complete this test, so I had to cut the footage short and just insert the final figures here. And as easy as that, the SSD is now fitted in the MacBook Pro. I wish I had fitted this SSD a long time ago. A lot of my devices that I have here already have SSDs. Speed and stability are top notch. So I definitely recommend getting an SSD as your boot drive right from the beginning. Don't wait. And it's pretty easy to do it yourself. Also storage is going pretty cheap these days and you can get a 240GB SSD for next to nothing. So that wraps up today's video, I'll catch you guys in the next one, until then, peace.